this lesson. So in this lesson, we're going to move on to the second type of bracketing method, which is the false position method. So in this lesson, we're going to learn the concept behind the false position method. We're going to develop a code to approximate the same function that we use for the bisection method, also the approximate error below 0.1%. This time, we're going to use the false position method. And also, I'm going to show you how the false position code is only one line of code difference from the bisection code. Now, if you remember with the false position code, how did we get the root? Well, the root was merely an average, right? We took the upper limit plus the lower limit divided by 2. Well, this is kind of a brute force approach. Why? Because it does not take into account the function value at the upper limit or the function value at the lower limit. Because the idea here is, if the function value at the lower limit, for example, is smaller than the function value at the upper limit, the root should be closer to the lower limit because the lower limit is closer to zero. Okay, so this is what the false position does. The false position is an improvement over the bisection method. In this case, it takes into account the function value at the upper limit and the function value at the lower limit. So how does it do that? Well, what it does is, very, very simply, it takes the uh, function value at the upper limit and connects it with a line to the function value at the lower limit. And whatever that intercept at the x-axis is now the approximation of my root. Very simple. So how do we get an equation for that root? Well, we're going to use a concept of similar triangles. What is, the, what is uh, common for this triangle and that triangle is the slope of the hypotenuse here is the same as the slope of the hypotenuse here. So this one is going to be the function at the lower limit divided by this um, uh, run, which is uh, xr minus um, xl. And also the same thing for this one is the function value at the upper limit, and this is the rise because we know that the function here is zero, and the run here is xr minus um, xu, the upper limit. Well, if I rewrite this equation, I get this equation down here in terms of xr. And now this is the new approximation for the xr now, taking into account not only the values of the upper limit and lower limit x's, but also the upper limit and lower limit functions, right? Because the idea that we're uh, following here is, we're trying to get an estimate closer to the function value that is closer to zero. So that's the main idea of the false position. So let's, add, let's go ahead and actually write the code for it. And the code for it is very, very simple. So let's um, uh, create a new module. And since there's only one line of code difference, let's actually copy this. And let's go to module down one here. And I'm pasting it here. I'm going to change this name to false position. Now, one thing I want to go through is, say for instance, this is my first estimate, and I got this as my xr, and you can see it's very close to the 2 that is our, um, our root here. Well, much like the uh, bisection, now I have two sections, right? I have this section between um, xl and xr, and I have another section between xr and xu, so I have to decide uh, where is my root. So my root is clearly in this one, which means xr becomes the lower limit of this uh, interval. So you can see that we're still making the same decision. I shouldn't have had a space here. Um, I'm still making the same decision as I uh, did with the bisection. And the same thing happens. So say, for instance, I'm going to use this line. So this is now my root. And my next root is just connecting this um, new lower limit, which was my uh, last uh, root, my lower limit, to my upper limit. And now you see that intersection or the intercept to my uh, x. This becomes my next or second approximation for the root. And it keeps uh, uh, repeating this until we go below whatever set criteria uh, that we, we have. In this case, we are trying to go below 0.1%. Uh, so what do I mean by the false position code is only one line of code difference from the bisection? Well, because with the bisection, as you remember, we did the xr uh, defined in terms of the upper limit plus lower limit divided by 2, but now we're defining the xr differently. So the line of code that is going to be changing is what is xr equal to. So xr equal to right now the upper limit minus, I'm going to open parentheses, the function at the upper limit multiplied by the lower limit minus the upper limit and that's going to be divided 
by the function at the lower limit minus the function at the upper limit and I will close parenthesis and I think there's one more that is needed okay perfect so that is it that is we wrote the false position code because the false position basically approximate the root factoring in not only the lower limit and the upper limit x values but also the uh, lower limit and upper limit function values as well so let's actually go ahead and write the code the code is still the same we're going to get an uh, a root and get the um, the approximate error, the true error, and also after we get an approximation, maybe the approximation is not uh, accurate enough, we uh, choose our next interval and we go get another root. Um, we know that this line of code is basically to display these values for each iteration. So let's actually run our code and see how it's going to perform. All right, perfect. So you can see that it took five iterations for it to go below a, um, an error of 0.1%. And we can say for for we can see from this case it actually went below 0.1 percent for both the approximate error and the true error, and we can see also the true error is still lower than the approximate error, and we're at a final root of 1.999414. The one thing that I also want you to see is that it only took five iterations because if we go back to the bisection method, it took 10 iterations for it to reach an approximate error below 0.1%, but with the false position, it only took five iteration. So by taking into account the function value at the upper limit and the function value at the lower limit, and getting an a approximation closer to the one that is closest to zero, made the uh, technique much more efficient. And we can it see it crystallized in the fact that it only took us five iterations to reach an approximate error below 0.1% as opposed to the bisection which took us 10. Now let's actually recap what we learned in this lesson. What, so what we learned in this lesson is uh, a new or the second uh, bracketing technique which is the false position and the false position technique uh, is different from the bisection is that it takes into account the uh, function values at the upper limit and lower limit to get a better um, approximation for the roots and we found that if we derive this equation basically by connecting the upper limit to the lower limit we use the concept of uh, similar triangles what is similar between those two triangles is the slope of the hypotenuse here and we related it in terms of this these two equations we put them equal to each other and we got the new description for what the um, root is and we also saw that the uh, false position code is only one line of code difference from the bisection code, and that is basically in how we define XR. We also saw by running this code, it only took us five iterations to reach a uh, approximate error below 0.1%, as opposed to the bisection method, which took us 10 iterations to go below 0.1%. So you can clearly see that the false position is superior to the bisection method. Well, that marks the end of this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.